We have a CD-ROM emulator that you can boot from. It runs under Windows and MS-DOS and it runs off a $15 Raspberry Pi. Hey guys, this is one interesting project. The last few days I've been testing this with a bunch of motherboards. Let's start with Socket 775. Here everything worked just fine. The board is more modern, it supports booting from USB, so I'm booting the Windows 98 quick install ISO and installing Windows 98. And then I'm changing the ISO to expendable and installing the game. In MS-DOS mode also everything is working just fine. Here I'm installing System Shock. This is the CD-ROM version with the full speech and high resolution graphics. Next up is the good old Pentium 2 with the Intel 440BX chipset. Again under Windows 98 everything worked just fine. Here we can see me installing Star Wars Shadow of the Empire. DOS mode also worked fine but here I had to try out a few different CD-ROM drivers and connect the device through a USB hub into the motherboard for some reason. But then again, everything worked fine. I played a little bit of Rebel Assault. This is one of the very first CD-ROM games that I owned back in the day. Also tested out Rebel Assault 2 as well as Wing Commander 3. Some of these games have CD-ROM benchmarks built in and it seems that we're getting around the equivalent of a 6x speed CD-ROM drive. And finally, I tested with the Pentium MMX 233, representing the good old Super Socket 7 motherboard under Windows 98. Again, no issues to report, but I was unable to get it to work under MS-DOS. I did try a few different USB drivers, but I'm guessing the ALI USB port might just not be supported. Maybe we have better luck with a chipset from VIA or a regular Socket 7 motherboard with a chipset from Intel. It also works very well with the ITX Llama for those that are interested. And now let's dig a little bit deeper. Danny is the guy behind the USB ODE project and it runs off this little device. It's a 15 USD Raspberry Pi. It is the 02W. And I must say this project really surprised me. I never even considered using a USB optical drive for retro gaming, especially MS-DOS. But to my surprise, this works much better than I expected. The initial setup is very easy. We use Pi Imager to write a supplied image onto a SD card. Make sure you get a fast SD card because it can affect startup and loading times. You need to press Ctrl, Shift and X to access the advanced options. Here you can configure your network settings. Remember that this Raspberry Pi only supports the 2.4 GHz Wi-Fi network. Once the image is written, we copy a bunch of supplied files onto the SD card. And then we insert the SD card into the Raspberry Pi, hook it up with a USB cable to a modern computer and we wait for it to set itself up. It takes around two minutes with my SD card. After a while, two drives should pop up on the screen. There's one called IM Store, and this is where we can copy our ISO files into. The Raspberry Pi has Wi-Fi, so we can just use a web interface from a computer on the same network to configure the device. We can choose what image we want to load, we can shut down the device, we can switch between the two modes, which is one for USB file transfer and the other one, of course, as a USB CD-ROM emulator. If you prefer a screen and buttons, you can buy a optional WaveShare 1.3 inch OLED display hat. So this will drive the cost up a little bit. So you need a Pi with the header pre-installed. It sells for around 18 USD. And I believe the WaveShare OLED display hat is also around $20. At the time of making this video, I tested version 1.7 of the operating system, but there's already a new release out with a really interesting update 
it supports FTP. So we can use Wi-Fi to load the device with ISO images uh, through the network, which is very handy. So this can be connected at the back of your retro PC and you don't need to unplug it all the time. It also has some optimizations to make it initialize a little bit faster. So I had good success booting ISOs to install Windows, installing games in Windows 98 and even in MS-DOS, but there are some limitations. So let's talk about those. The first one is, well, this is a USB device. So it's not an ID or a SCSI optical drive emulator. That means on a 386 without USB ports, this is not the device for you. But if you have a USB port and Maybe it's a chipset from Intel, like a 440px uh, retro machine. Even with USB 1, the performance is just fine. It should use USB high-speed mode, 12 megabits a second. That's plenty. Uh, the equivalent of a 6x speed optical drive. That is fine under MS-DOS. Under Windows 98, that can be a little bit on the slow side, but here we can use Daemon tools anyway. At this point of time, it only supports ISO images, no files in the bin queue format and no CD digital audio. But uh, it is one of the key goals of this project. And Danny, uh, he's really passionate. I've been speaking to him on Discord. He really wants to turn this into a nifty device supporting CD digital audio, bin and queue files. So I'm really excited for this project. And this video is also, uh, yeah, it's an opportunity for me to share this project and the passion, I'm really excited about this one, but also a call to action. If you uh, have a Raspberry Pi lying around, give this a go with your retro uh, PC. I will put some resources down below in the video description, not just where you can download everything, also some DOS startup files that I've been uh, testing and access to a Discord server where we can exchange findings, what driver worked on which machine and so on. This project really resonates with me. It is affordable, it's very easy to set up and easy to use and it ticks a lot of boxes. And it's got that thing going for it, which is uh, a personal approach to mine. Focus on the things that do work. I know some of you will complain that it can't connect to ID and uh, it can't play CD digital audio yet, but many, many DOS games are now accessible through this. It's already uh, saved a lot of time in my lab. I've been able to test Rebel Assault, Rebel Assault 2, games that usually are not on my radar because it's quite a pain in the neck to burn disks and then always mucking around with optical disk drives. Half of them have stopped working since I've been collecting them. So uh, seeing the ISO images on the screen, toggling uh, through the menus and just selecting the image and then off you go. It's a really nice experience. And best of all is the price. This is affordable, cheap, fun for our retro PC hobby. So I hope this also resonates with you guys. And yeah, guys, this is it. I covered most of the basics. The project is ongoing. So by the time I'm doing this, uh, this video, there's already a new version out. So that's why I didn't do a tutorial that's too much in depth because uh, very likely uh, the user interface has already changed. I'm uh, hearing reports that the font, for example, on the OLED hat has been updated. So who knows what Danny will cook up by the time this video launches. And we wanna hear from, from you, your personal uh, success stories, or did you run into any compatibility issues? Because the more of us share our findings, the more successful we can make this project. Danny, well done. This is one really nifty project that you put together. And yeah, I'm sold, I'm invested. I will support you going forward using this in future projects. And I hope this has a bright future in the retro PC community. And that's it from me for this one, guys. Thank you so much for watching and I shall see you soon with another one.